two seats. There's more room in the front row. I don't buy it. Yeah, you pull the whole No, no. Okay. She's in Northeast Pennsylvania. Okay. So again, my name is Michelle Isherwood. I am International Executive Board Member at Large, Humphrey Chapter, former District Justice of District 2, former Justice of the San Francisco Alumni Chapter, now fully residing in Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city owner. <laughs> And what I wanted to talk about today, sorry, my voice is kind of going. I've been in preaching at DJs all day long, and they are so glad to get rid of me. Um, <laughs> I mean, they were glad to loan me to you guys. So what I wanted to talk about today was marketing and branding yourself and your chapter. And these are skill sets that I hope that you can, well, we want you to market file to Delta in a positive way. But also, these are skills that you can use to market yourself market your company, market whatever organization that you're part of. I want you to be able to take this stuff back. So if you have questions, please ask. Um, and if I don't know the answer, I'll probably make it up, but it'll sound convincing, so don't worry. So just a little bit about me. Um, I have a JD MBA. I got my MBA first. I didn't know there were dual programs. So it was a long time in school. Um, but the big thing is I spent about 15 years in marketing before I went to law school. I was putting out my MBA in marketing. Um, I've since practiced at a firm for a little while. I've done some government audit. I just spent four plus years at the University of Phoenix as the director of marketing compliance. So I have a marketing background. It's kind of a passion of mine. I don't do it now. I'm a government auditor for the state of Nevada. Uh, but again, I've, I've been charged with Initiative One. Some of you hear about it. You'll probably see my posts on Facebook and get emails. Uh, and we're trying to increase brand recognition of File for Delta. And one of the ways we want to do that is to give you all some tools to not only market File for Delta, but yourselves and whatever other passions you have. Because that this will help further our law career. So let's get started. Oh. Am I doing it right? There we go. So the key steps. Do your research, build your plan, measure your results. This, I don't know how many of you are trial attorneys or really any even uh, law students or whatever. It's pretty much the same thing. You need to do your research. You need to know what you're talking about. You need to know what your product is. You need to know what your who your customers are. You need to know your market and you need to know your goals and objectives. So basically, research. You don't do it on Westlaw. You do it on the. You can do it on the internet. You can ask people. We can help you. Um, the the our, our website is full of information about File for Delta. Um, just who knows anything about File for Delta? What do you know? Know your product. What do you know? How do you get people to join? What do you tell them? <laughs> that it's a service organization to serve our community. People in our profession, um, and we try to get other people to join. Yeah, that's one. What else? I saw over here. Um, the biggest law fraternity. Great. Now the only. Well, I guess there's yeah. one more. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Someone else. Okay. All the discounts. All the discounts are member benefits. Anyone else? What do you know about Five for Delta? What do you know about its history? Who's in it? It's an international networking opportunity. Great. Anyone else? I see Curtis back there. What do you got? And, uh, You're going to let them do it. Okay, I'm going to go yeah. through my ringer. Okay, well, go ahead, Renee. Notorious. <laughs> <laughs> Who are our members? Who's one of our most? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Exactly. Yes. Who else? Anyone else? Know anybody else? Elena Kagan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the majority of the BJ. BJ. And his wife, Hillary and Carter, are basically where the video ended. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so know your product. What do we do? Who are we? Know your customer, know your market, know your goals and objectives. Build your plan, measure your results. So here we go. Do your research, know your product. File for Delta. Yourself. What do you know about yourself? 
when you go in for a job interview, when you're you are selling yourself, you're selling your skills. Why are you a better fit? When you want a promotion at work, you are selling you. What makes you the best fit? What are your key features and attributes? And how does what you offer, what the product, which is you, or anything, the fraternity, how does that differ from others? How does it differ? What, what can you bring to the table? Or what can we bring to the table with Phi Alpha Delta or whatever organization you're in or whatever your side hustle is? What do you bring? What is, are the key features? What are the things that we can help you with? I heard member benefits. I heard famous members. I heard international networking opportunities. These are all things. I would also add um, our conventions, our leadership conference, our professional development, our webinars, I have all of that. Um, mostly because I love all of those. So think of what, what do you have? And how does what we offer differ from everyone else? How does what you offer? If you're going into it for a job interview, what makes you the candidate? There are probably 10 others. They all have law degrees. They all have, you know, X number of years experienced. But what makes you stand out? What is your key feature? You know, what is it? If, if we look at Phi Alpha Delta, what's our key benefit? There are other, especially once you're out of an alumni and you're out in the world, there are plenty of other law organizations to join. There are, there's, there's the bar, there's plenty of affinity bars. What's, uh, what do you got? So, using earlier folks, we can do a SWOT analysis of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And I, these are, go ahead. I mean, I joked before, but we are badass, and I do tell people that, and I <laughs> explain to them that you can find some of the things we have in other places, but you can't find the earnest fraternalism at the core of what we do, and I think that really is what makes us stand apart. The, the, ben the benefits and the other stuff is important to compete with others, but what puts us over that is the fact that we're badass. I think there's a level of... I'll do fraternalism, but I'm, it's whatever, we're a fraternity. But I mean, it, there's a level of engagement for our members because we have this investment in each other. We're fraternity brothers and sisters. We, we're invested in each other. You call me, even if you've seen me once up here and you're like, oh, I'll talk to her later. But call me, email me. I'm on Facebook. I am almost always available. I don't sleep much. Um, I play word with friends if anybody wants to do that. Uh, but these are ways I engage with people. Um, I have never once called a member and had them say, well, I don't want to talk to you. I've always been able to reach out to someone and say, listen, I have this issue. Um, there's a member in California. I have never met him in person, but when I moved out there, uh, I wanted to move into some different practice areas. And I had a resume, and it was old. And I said, hey, I sent him a thing. He, he does what I, what I wanted to do, and I sent him a, a, an informational, I sent him an email and I said, hey, can you, you know, can, if you have time, can we talk? And he said, yeah. And then he looked at my resume, he spent, he must have spent hours redoing it, adding suggestions, talking me through, um, and, and it was wonderful. Um, I've lived five different states, like four of them, four, three or four of them since law school, and I have ready-made contacts when I get there. So that's what, that's what I think a key feature. How does our product differ from others? The fraternalism. I mean, there's lots of people who are Brooks Brothers discount, but when you start to add up what we have, I love it, don't get me wrong. Um, now we have our law line discount for CLEs. It's awesome, I love them. Um, do your research, know your market. What's your market look like? So if you're marketing Phi Alpha Delta, what else is in, if you're in law school, what other clubs are there? What other organizations? Um, how, how many current potential members do you have or customers? Who are they? Um, what and what and or is who is the competition and what do they offer? And what organizations have shared interests that you could offer partnership interests to? All these are great. Um, but you need to know who, who wants to join. What's our target market? I mean, yeah, we'll let in anybody, but who wants to? And you know in law school, you know, as you're getting to know your, 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 just your people and, and, your, and your section and, and others, um, when, you're in the legal, when you're in the market for a job, what's out there? What do you want to do? Do you want to do a certain kind of law? Figure out what, what firms do that. What kind of firms do you want to do? Big, little, boutique, big, sole practitioners? Where are you going to go? If you want to do non-traditional, what kind of company would hire you? You want to do compliance? Great. 
what do you, what kind? What, what kind of, what do you need and who does what you want to do? And then how many other people, you know, if you're, if you're marketing yourself, how many other people do what you do and what can you do to differentiate yourself? Um, who's, our, who's our competitors? I know there's one other law, I can't remember the name, the other law attorney. Does it Which one? Yeah. Who's the peers? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Some law schools have them, some don't. But okay, so now know how we differentiate. I never talk down, I don't need to I don't need to say why I don't need to say what they lack, but I can tell you what we have. And by doing that, focusing on our key features, and again, they're out there, um, and the information's there, and if you have if you need more information, let me know. We'll we can we have great brochures coming, the website's being redesigned, all these are tools for you. And then what organizations, and this is really important, we, we focus on this a lot for law, but I, I, I really want to start introducing this and pounding this home for a long time. What organizations have shared interests that we could partner with? It's great. It gets our names out. So if you're in law, there's a, usually a local bar association, even in law school, there's other student organizations. You don't have to do it alone. If you want to plan an event, if you want to get a word out, work with somebody else. As long as you, our logo is right next to theirs, we have co-branding. And it also opens up our opportunity to meet a whole other group of people that might want to join Phi Alpha Delta, they just don't know it yet. They don't know it yet because we haven't introduced ourselves to them. And so partnering with them gives us a bigger reach. It also gives us better knowledge. We can take their best practices and use them for ours. Oh, sorry. So, Again, do your research, know your customer. Who are they? Who, who, again, who are they? What does our products, or what, what need do we fill for them? What can we fill for them? What need do they don't even know they have that we can fill for them? I mean, there's, there's plenty of things out there, and sometimes people can't even articulate their need, but we can figure it out, and we know what it is. Um, and then, how do we want to be communicated with? This is key. We had focus groups, I think, did anybody here participate in focus groups? Yeah, quite a few people. And one of the things we talked about is, how do you want us to get messages to you? Um, passenger pigeon, email, <laughs> regular <laughs> mail, um, somebody said Slack. Facts. 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 What do you need? And then kind of customize your message. And part of this goes with your target audience. Um, we, have, we have more senior members. They don't do email. <laughs> they don't do them. And they exactly don't do Facebook. And that's okay. What they do is phone. They love the phone. And and I would rather actually talk to you over the phone than email. I'm not a big fan of email. I use it out of necessity. Um, but that's how they want to be communicated with. And, and depending on who you're targeting, if you're in a whole group of people that don't use Facebook, don't use Instagram, social media is probably not the best place for you to promote whatever you're trying to do. I'll tell you, I, the best to me is still personal interaction. Making the ask on your own. Walking up to someone and saying, hey, Jeanette, uh, here's Phi Alpha Delta. Come to one of our events. You want to join? And those, that interaction, that human contact is always great for me. Again, I still use instant message uh, a lot. I text, but I'm slow. Uh, I'll use whatever, FaceTime, whatever gets me in front of the people I need to get in front of. And that's the same with, um, with, if you're interviewing for a firm, if you're interviewing for any job, how do they communicate? Learn their culture enough so that when you go into that interview, because a lot of companies, they want to they fit, a culture fit. So not only do you have the skills, but you need to get along with others in the sandbox. How do you do that? What do they like? Are they, you know, you don't, I, I just moved, I was in Silicon Valley, and the one thing people will tell you, you don't necessarily show up to a suit to interview for in a suit to interview for a startup. Everyone else is in their Allbirds and their Patagonia vest and jeans. Maybe you walk in there in your Brooks Brothers suit, which looks fantastic, but that's not their culture fit. So okay, learn that. Find, figure out. Talk to somebody. Um, Glassdoor. Does anybody know what Glassdoor is? Most of everybody LinkedIn. Glassdoor has a lot of comp, usually information where people put information about interview culture culture of the company, I would use it, and, and any resources you can have to figure out. Same with Phi Alpha Delta, depending on your law school or your local area, you know, 
Sometimes law schools, they want to focus on service. So your events in Phi Alpha Delta and your pitching, you want to talk to your service, service to the student. Sometimes everyone, you know, professional development is what people want. Um, great. Here's what we have, webinars, we're doing this, we're doing that, here's how you do this. Some people just want community. I love community. I, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert and I'm, I'm always talking to people in the line at the grocery store, whatever. But I'm saying, know who your people are. If they want community, talk about our networking, talk about what we have and, and how we get people involved. Our affinity groups, Glam Chapter, um, the Yarniac, some of us are big knitters and crocheters, we've got a whole group, and we, some of our members are great and post beautiful stuff. We have a, what's the new dog chapter, the pro bono oh, yeah. chapter, there's a cat chapter. Learned Paws. Oh, what is it called? Learned. It's not my name. Oh, Learned Paws. I did paw. not, it's Learned Paw. Yeah. But I mean, it's great, and, and these kind of groups and this kind of interaction, well, these aren't official they're not official chapters of the fraternity, but it's a great way to get to know our other members and it creates community, even though we're all across the country, all across the world. So know about this stuff, what do they want, and how do, you, how do they want to be communicated with. Okay, know your goals and objectives. What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to get that job? Do you want to, you know, get 40 members this year? What are your objectives? Do you want to just increase our brand awareness? Right now that's my goal and objective for the fraternity. I'm trying to increase our brand awareness. How am I going to get to that? Well, that's by working with all of you. That's by working with other organizations. That's by researching what other kind of marketing we can do and where we can get our name out. That's how I'm going to get there. But if I want to, if, if I want to get 40 new members for my chapter, I'm going to look and see where they are. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out who in our members has the skill set to get me there. Okay. We all, some people are introverted. They're not always the best recruiters. And that's okay, they have other things to do. But, you know, usually you want your outgoing people to get out there and, and recruit. But then maybe you save some of the introverted ones to kind of deal with the people who aren't as forward. Again, we don't want to scare people, but get, meet them where they're at. And so, you know, look, what do you want to do? You want to get that job? Great, that's your goal. What kind of job? Where do you want to be in that company? Where do you want to be in five years? And that, I think, is a fair thing. Where do you want to be in five years? And how do you get there? What jobs do you need to get? What skills do you need to obtain to get them? And start doing that. But use your, your market and your network to get there. Again, now build your plan. You've got your data. You, you, know, you know what our service offerings are. You know what your service offerings are. You know. Set your objectives. Again, what do you want to do? How do you, how do you want, what do you want to do? Do you want to be in a new job in six months? Do you want to recruit 100 new members? Do you want to find 500 new alumni members for the, for the fraternity? How, we, how are we going to get there? And then create a message and look that communicates your brand. Um, for the fraternity, we've done that for you. It's purple and gold. <laughs> It is. It's purple and gold. We're, we're working on, we're updating our mission and vision. Um, work on your elevator speech, which we are still working on, and I will provide you with one. But in the meantime, come up with one. You should have an elevator speech in general for yourself. What do you do? How do you do it? Um, I'm in junior league. We have elevator speeches that tell you what junior league is. See? Other junior leaguers? Yeah. What's Go an ahead. elevator speech? The elevator speech is a... I don't know, 15 to 30 second speech that sums up what your organization or what who you are in the time it takes to get from the, like the first floor to the 10th floor. Something where someone walks up, and I, I, I do a lot, I've done a lot of tabling for five adults in my time, both as a student, as a district justice, as an alum, and I love it. I, the thing that gets me every time is someone will walk up to the table and they'll say, Five the Delta, what's that? And the person says, Oh, it's just a legal club. <laughs> You're killing me here. Um, we're not a legal club. We are a professional law fraternity that, off that offers focuses on services to our, our, our the student, the community, the profession. We offer member benefits. We offer networking. We have this. We have that. Whatever custom message is going to get it across to your people. So create your message. Create your look and feel. If it's about you, create something. I'm a professional, I'm a, you know, I'm a compliance professional with 10 years of experience 
in X, Y, and Z. I have this, I have that, I come with this. And then create your look and feel. You know, what do you look like? What's your look? And, and, and create it. What's your professional look? And then get in there and, and sell yourself. But if you don't have your message and you don't kind of have your, your feel and your brand figured out, it's going to be really hard to do that. Um, create a communication strategy. Again, how, if you're looking for a job, how are you going to get it? Are you going to mail res paper resumes? Um, I don't even know if people do that anymore, but I have seen it. Some places ask for it. Are you going to go through LinkedIn and the quick apply? Are you going to work through your network and say, hey, hey, John, I noticed you work for this company I want to, I want to be with, and they have an opening. Could you put my resume in for me? Stuff like that. Like, how are you going to create your your communication strategy for Phi Alpha Delta? How are you going to pitch our organization? to get to the people that it needs to get in a way they want to read it so you get the message in front of them. So, you know, how are you going to do it? It's going to be email, it's flyers, the little, just, they still do this on the chalkboard corner, they write, file for Delta meeting, room 415, I don't know, I have no. a school they have screen. <laughs> they have screens now. Do you have a screen? Is there some, is there some place in, your, in the law school that flashes what things are doing? Um, for junior league, we have a, monthly newsletter. Are we going to get that in there? We have the reporter. We have other methods. We have our Facebook page. We have our website. Where are you, where are you going to put the information so that the people you want to see it can get it and get it effectively? Did you have a question? I'm just stretching. I'm just stretching. Okay. I didn't want to ignore you. I've been ignoring <laughs> Dan. Dan McDowell all day long. Um, so I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> anyway, and then establish a schedule. When do you want to accomplish this? If it's a job, maybe you want it in six months. Maybe you want it in two weeks. Establish a realistic schedule. Um, for law schools, you know that your semester, how your semester works. We all get there, woohoo, school starts, we're so excited. And then as the semester goes on, you have midterms, you have finals. When, when are you going to communicate with the, when are you going to use your communication strategy in a schedule that's going to get the most people when they're most receptive to hear that message. How are we going to do that? In, in general, and oh, Leslie's here and some others, it's the first few weeks of school. You know, communicate that message, get on board. That's why it's so important as a, as a chapter officer to be ready to hit the ground running when the, when the school year starts. Um, if you're an alumni, if you're an alumni officer and, or an alumni chapter and you want to recruit alumni members, when is your best time to reach them? After work usually, um, you know, times, you got to figure out when you can get the people you want in the time to get it. And then execute on that plan. So once you have all this, execute on it. Figure out and just keep going. If, you know, if sometimes you have to start over, sometimes that's fine, but figure out your plan and start working it. Um, in, and not, you can't always do it alone. Like, when I, when I talk about this and I say you, especially when it's chapters and when you're trying to recruit, get other people involved. Don't do it yourself. Usually, even if you're, if you're an officer, you're usually not the only one, hopefully. Um, work with your people. Figure out who else can, can send the emails. Figure out who else can show up and approach people. Find out who in your chapter, in your organization, or if your friends has connections to other groups so you can partner. Figure this out and put it in your plan. And put names next to, you know, Renee's going to contact these five people. Michelle's going to contact these five people. This email that goes out on Tuesday will be sent by the executive office. Write it out. It, it, it works. And then, let's see, measure your results. Here's the big thing. A lot of people put plans together, but they don't, they don't have any way of tracking it. How do you know it's successful? It's great to have a plan, but if, what's your definition of success? Figure out how you want to measure it to see if what you're doing meets those objectives you've met in the beginning. So you want a job in six months. If you put your plan together, it's getting at like month four and a half or month three. And you're thinking, okay, this isn't working. I'm not getting the results I want. So then you got you have to go back and look at your plan and say, what can I fix? What can I tweak? What can I try different? How do I get these other things? If you're not getting members, 
you know, it's the third or fourth week of school and you have two people who want to sign up for Phi Alpha Delta. We'll take them, but why are we getting 10? Why aren't we getting 30? Why aren't we getting 100? Figure out why. You know, talk about it. Go through, say, these are the things we've tried. What kind of response have we gotten? You know, we tried to do a meeting at 2 o'clock on a Thursday and nobody came. Why? Maybe there's 40 other meetings at 2 o'clock on a Thursday. Figure out what works best for you. You want alumni to come to your event in order to do a mixer and recruit more people? I will tell you that Thursday at 2 o'clock is probably not the best time. <laughs> it's hard. I, you know, I can't, I, and or, you know, we, we set up the event, but we didn't announce it till three hours before it started. Okay, well, nobody came because they didn't know. But maybe we do it a week ahead. Maybe we do it two weeks ahead. Is six weeks too early? I don't know. Try them. See what works for your people. But then adjust. Figure it out. Try something else. So your plan will not, well, is there to work with you? It's not set in stone. Just keep working on what's going to work for you. And then, like I said, adjust your plan if your objectives are not met. And it's okay. Reach out to other people. Call the executive office. Call one of us. Um, call some other members. Figure out, brainstorm a way to get to your objective. Or maybe, think about it for a minute, are your objectives realistic? If you're in a law school class of, you know, if your law school cl class is like 200 people, are you going to get all 200? We would love it if you did, by the way. <laughs> but are you? No, you want, you're probably going to get maybe even half. 150. It's okay to have big goals and then we adjust them later, but ultimately, what's realistic in your objective? Again, if you want to be a rocket scientist, I want a job as a rocket scientist. Well, I have, I've never passed calculus, and I started my lab station on fire in chemistry. Um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's terrible. Uh, but the, the thing is, I'm probably that's not a realistic goal for me. But Maybe I can do something else. What's my goal? I want to do healthcare compliance. Great. What do I need to learn to do that? I need to take these classes. There's a CLE available through Law Line. Whatever. What was it? I got you. Here you go. I'm going to talk to Renee. I am. I'm going to reach out to my network and say, hey, you have the job I want. How'd you get there? What skill set do you have? Reach out to people and say, hey, I saw your chapter just recruited 100 people. How did you do it? Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. I mean, the wheel's there for a reason. It's a great design. It works. It rolls your car forward. You can rollerblade on them. It's awesome. I don't know if people still do that. But anyway, it, reach out. Network, ask. Like, you have the job I want. You, you know, your chapter won best professional programming. How did you do it? What did you do? Who did you reach out to? Who did you work with? Ask. It, that's the big thing. You got I, I used to sit and watch as the Chicago chapters got 150 people a semester. I, I was at Michigan State going, what? We got 40. But they got 150. How did they do that? And so, you know, with, with all the modern technology now, it's easy to do it. You can email, um, Slack, whatever. Um, again, whatever's available to you, reach out and ask people. They'll help you especially within the fraternity. And jobs, again, you're here. So network with the people. You know what jobs you want. You, um, there's three law pads here too, right? <laughs> what law school do you want to go to? How they get, how those people get into that law school? You know, where do you go with it? What, you know, and you think you want to go to a law school, talk to somebody. There's probably a recent PAD graduate who went to that. There's probably a not so recent PAD graduate who went to that school. Talk to them. Also get to know them because a recommendation letter from an alum always helps. It can't hurt. Well, hopefully not. But <laughs> if, if, reach out to them. Talk to them. Say, hey, I just want to know. You were at this law school. What did you? What was it like? Did you like the professors? Was it, you know, was it challenging? Whatever. What did you do to get in? What kind of scores did you have? How did you study for that? Again, use your network. Figure out what your objectives are, build them, and do this. So, questions, concerns, cheap shots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting DJ training, so I'm taking a few of those today. Go ahead. Um, 
So with the whole trying to figure out what your customer like wants or needs, mm -hmm. so how exactly would you do that? With um, let's say an undergrad with the student body, how would you try to figure out what they want to see? So we we've been doing um, at least on the well on the online level, we've been doing focus groups. We've been doing um, surveys. I talk to people all the time. Some of them are like, please stop talking to me. But I mean, call people, ask them, ask your friends, ask your other students. Um, you're, you're most likely, I find that if you're a PAD member, especially if you're a PAD officer, you're not just in Phi Alpha Delta. You are in probably four other organizations and hold various other leadership positions because you're a leader. That's what we do, we lead, and we can't help ourselves, and we end up saying, oh, yeah, I'll be treasurer of whatever organization, because you do. So ask. And look at what other places are doing. People will tell you, if you, Justin Roberts is a, a district justice, and he just gave a really good presentation, which hopefully we'll make available via video very soon, about um, recruiting. And it, his big thing at the end is make the ask. Ask, what do you want? What do you want to do? What would make you join Phi Alpha Delta? Let them tell you. And then say, well, here's what we offer. And part of it is knowing what we do. So again, ask. Um, surveys, I love SurveyMonkey. I think some of our members are getting tired of my SurveyMonkeys. Um, but it works. And uh, you know, if you have communication tools within, your, within the college, use them. Send them out. Yeah, that Slack, I guess, is big. I don't really use it yet. but. It, it, it's a tool. I use it, talk, but talking to people, I think, is the best way to find out what they want. Ask them. I, I find, to your point, when I, at various points, am tabling, now with an alum, it's a little easier because y'all don't talk to me, but um, <laughs> have something at the tables, have something to draw them in. Candy's generally a good, easy one, right? Um, and then you have to know what we have. Like you, as the person selling, have to have like 10 things off the top of your head you can riddle off that we offer. Don't riddle them off. Have a, dude, that tie. That tie, I'm Renee. Hi. I'm Renee, nice I'm, to meet you. Um, I'm John. So, so we're, we're Pat, what are you looking for? What are you, we're all here, what are you looking for? And then he's gonna tell me yep. something. So, I'm, you know, I don't know about my fashion sense, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I'm the, we have a glam chapter, right? One of my 10 things. And so I've created a conversation. And the most important thing after that conversation, now that John's a member, well yeah. done, <laughs> is, um, is to have events that you've orchestrated and you've planned that speak to that. So if you have 10 new members who are potential members or make sure, and like seven of them have an interest in fashion, <laughs> then have an event something around fashion. But it really is just as simple. I, I mean, I wouldn't go so far as a survey monkey. No offense. Um, <laughs> Grenade gets my service. <laughs> <laughs> I would start it that way. So it's just a matter of like, know 10 things about Pat off the top of your head and be willing to like listen and do the matching game like kindergarten and then create an event that makes sense. Well, I think that's the key, the listen part. A lot of times we ask, we ask questions. I've been married a long time. And sometimes I'll ask my husband a question and then I realize I didn't even listen to his answer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell me that? They'll say, well, I didn't want to do that. I told you that. I'm like, I don't remember that. <laughs> and so like, the active listening part is like, what do, you, what do you want to do? And then we have to listen for what they say. And I know that sounds so easy, but it's not because we're all busy. So they're answering, I am 10 questions down the line thinking, i got to ask them this too. But I never listened to what they said in the first place. That is not helpful. So I mean, the active listening part and to make yourself be present when you're asking, it is good, and then you have that back and forth. By um, way, fashion events, and I think Emily and them can help you with this. I know that Brooks Brothers will normally come out and do those for you. Renee has the utmost fashion sense, and she can help you as well. But Brooks Brothers, and I thought we had J. Crew or oh, uh, Men's Warehouse. Men's Warehouse. Ooh. So, so just women's clothes. And they yes. just acquired big and tall for those brothers who need extra long ties, because I know that's an issue. Mm -hmm. exactly. I've been told. I listen. Resources <laughs> <laughs> are there, and the executive office and any of us can that's help you at one point. There, and there's a different way of there are different ways of phrasing the what are you looking for question, right. because sometimes that can sound 
too much like a survey, it, it, not enough and like a conversation, a little yeah. aggressive. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I was doing that on the fly, but you're absolutely but, but, right. But, you, know, <laughs> you, you know, what are you excited about? What surprised what you? you? What interests you? What are you looking forward to? I also like doing the, um, instead of when I meet people, especially as an alum, at events, and the what do you, what do, you do? Oh, I hate that my, question. My, my inner, my inner <laughs> expletives come out, um, and so instead I ask people, what are, your, what are your passions and how do you fund them? And every now and again, very rare, you get a unicorn who tells you it's the same thing, and they get really excited to tell you, but I, <laughs> who are you? What are your passions? Is it this unicorn? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also known as Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yeah. I think a big thing to answer also once you realize who your audience is, you have to be aware of your competition. So if all of your chapters get like a red wave, you're trying to recruit freshmen and sophomores, but there's a freshman and sophomore orientation that day, you can't expect them to come to your meeting if there's something contradicting. So you have to be aware of what else is going on on campus and face your events around those things. So again, that's, that's knowing your competitors. Mm -hmm. what, what are you competing with? And it's not necessarily you're competing with a thing or a person. Time. Time is a competitor. Who has time? You, when, when is the time that we can get these people in the best? We used to try to get evening students. So we would try to plan our events in between when the day classes ended and the night classes started. And there was a period of time there where we could have meetings and get the, the, the night students in there. And it worked for people. But you know, you said, these are things you have to think through and it's to put the plan together. Yeah, this is probably more for pre-law because one of the things I've always taught from middle school on up is goal setting. And when you get to the university level, goal setting is very important because you have a goal to go to law school. That's your target. So we had one of our students that did recruiting and she fo she, that was what she focused on when they said, okay, what's your goal? Well, one of the main goals you do is if you have a profession in mind, why would you not put yourself around those that you want to become? So, when she did that, the recruitment went up. Why don't you want to be a member of PET? Don't you want to be around lawyers and judges? And you, want, you want to ask them questions so that you can meet your goals. Are you on track? And you want to constantly check yourself and follow up. So when she used that, our membership went up. The one thing we ask people, even at, at alumni events, at all events, why did you join Phi Alpha Delta? And people will say, a lot of times they'll say, because someone asked me. But they'll also say, um, I am a first generation college or first generation law lawyer and I don't have, I didn't have family connections. I don't know how law firms work. I don't know how law school works. But I joined Phi Alpha Delta and I instantly had those people that I could ask. I couldn't go ask my dad or my mom because they weren't lawyers and I didn't have an uncle who was in a law firm, but I had, 330,000 members, and and I had alumni members in the area, and I had three L's that could help me and tell me how to get through my one L year. These these are things I, you know, if you're pre-law, I want to apply to law school. What do I need to do? How do I think through? I mean, how many people here know what character and fitness is? Yeah, mostly alum. Yeah, <laughs> you have to pass, you have to pass it. From I mean, all states, you have to pass a character and fitness test, which is like a background test, not a test, but you provide them all this information, they make sure you're not shady, and you get to be a lawyer. But most people don't know that, I have no idea. So even knowing that and knowing how to gather that information so that when you're applying for the bar, someone can talk you through that, that's a, a huge benefit. So I think you and I just want to okay, say a quick side note, yeah. character and fitness is important to know now for those for, on social media when you're talking about marketing yourself. Yeah. Because some states go through your social media accounts, etc. Mm -hmm. So be mindful of what you post and how that looks to someone who's judging you about your professionalism. Just gonna throw Yeah, to build on that, social media, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's great, you can build your brand on there, but you can also ruin your brand really fast. Mm -hmm. And so think about what you're posting. And again, in the early days, it was the Wild West. You would post all kinds of stuff. And I think you're seeing some of that come back to bite people now. 10 years later, and now suddenly they're running for office or they're you know, a sports star. And something they posted when they were 16 years old is up on, in the media. And you know, before I post things, and even back in the day, 
my rule was, I don't put anything on video I wouldn't want my grandma to see. Um, because it happens. That's Things true. get out. And if you're, you know, you, right now you think, oh, I'll never run for office. How do you know? Um, I didn't think I'd go to law school, but I did. And there are things that still think those through, and, and social media is a great way to build your brand again, but there's there's pitfalls, and be aware of them, and security clearances. I um, you know John probably has one. I had a top secret one with DOJ, and they'll, they'll look at things, and they want to know, you know, oh, every, every, every picture she has wine in her hand, or she's, you know, what in the beer pong challenge? I don't. I'm terrible at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, those types of things, when they're fine, it's, but you'll get asked, what well, do you have a drinking problem? You know, I see that you're with drinks all the time. I know for the interviews that, you know, people ask, well, you notice Michelle has a lot of pictures with alcohol. <laughs> you know, is she a big drinker? Is this going to cause a problem for us? So these are things to kind of be consciously aware of. And it, again, reputation, it, it's hard to, it's, hard to build it, it's easy to destroy it. And again, this is your market. You're marketing yourself, you're marketing the, the, the fraternity and the best ways to put our best face forward. And if there's ever a problem that something happens with your chapter or your fraternity, reach out to the executive office because they'll help you and we'll figure it out. We will. Um, just don't dig that hole deeper. But again, it's all about your presentation. What do you put forward? What do you want to accomplish? We want to make and I feel it already is, but get the message out there that we are a world-class organization. We're the second largest law organization in the in the country. We have a lot to offer. We, we do. Well, I, I mean, I love this organization. I come to everything. I left Reno at 6 in the morning. I got here at 6.30 at night on Thursday, and I hit the ground running. I was like, dinner, we got to go to the happy hour. I was up till 2 in the morning reminiscing with and getting back together with people and 1.30 in the morning, but I'm here because I love it. I could easily be at home sitting in Lake Tahoe on my paddleboard, but I'm not because I love this organization. And I think, you know, we got to bring that passion, and that's what marketing is about. What makes you passionate, like Renee said, Channel that into your plan. Channel that into your communication strategy. Like, Curtis, you said something back here. I was just thinking, as you're thinking about marketing and recruiting, you've all mm -hmm. it. the one word that you have up there is questions. And you should always be asking questions. You know, as a lawyer, when you're in the courtroom, you know, you're asking questions to get your, to the point that you want to get to. As a recruiter or as selling yourself, if you ask questions of others, find out what they want, then you'll get the answers, and then that will direct how you tell them how you fit into their life. Yeah, because you see people walk up and they'll say, file the Delta, and it's the other thing. They'll say, oh, file the Delta, we do this, this, and this, but we never ask them. Well, what do you want to do? What do you, why would, you know, what makes you interested in file the Delta? What can I answer for you? Hey, you want to join? Or hey, we're having a happy hour, come to that. You'll learn more people, you'll learn more about the organization, you'll meet these people. This professional development webinar is going to be held on this day. As a chapter, we've been doing these webinars. We've done two now. We're planning on doing them quarterly. Andrew has told me we might be able to do them every other month at some point. But these are things like you can attend them as a, as a chapter. There, we've put them, made them available on the website so that you can watch them later. And it's good. Uh, so, as an undergraduate chapter, we have the unique opportunity to market ourselves to a vast, like, majority of diverse people who come from, who are interested in, like, multiple things, like the medical field, and they're just not really, they get hung up on the word law fraternities. Okay. So, how do, how do you suggest we market ourselves to people who are interested in being professional, but don't necessarily, like, are... Obviously, like we want to recruit people who are interested in the law field. Okay. However, there are multiple other um, benefits to this organization that they could benefit from. How do you suggest us jumping that hurdle of them getting hung up on the law fraternity? Well, I mean, it, we are a law fraternity, but right. like you said, we offer other benefits. What are they? What are they trying to do? If they're just trying to meet like-minded people who want to move into a professional field, there you go. And we offer professional development that, whether you're going to practice law or not. I mean, and a lot of you in the pre-law, you don't know if you're going to go to the law school next year. You don't know if you're going to go 10 years down the line. I graduated 
long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I didn't go to law school until I was in my 30s. So it's always, you know, build the base, get to know people. Even if you're going to be a doctor, isn't it helpful to know some attorneys? I mean, what isn't it? <laughs> I, I know lots of them. I have cards in case I, in most cities, in case I need help at any point in time. But even at that, your family and your friends need, might need help or assistance with whatever. Drafting a will, um, building a trust, a family law issue. This fraternity gives you that access to those those people. And again, maybe some people they don't they don't know if they want to do law. They don't know, but they want that professional structure with the information and the professional development that we go through. Look, marketing is marketing. I know whenever I bring it up in the board meeting, people are like, oh, here she goes again. But again, I'm not joking. <laughs> I don't either. He's always like, yes, Michelle, tell us more. I'm so it's Nicole. But ultimately, where else are you going to go? I mean, you're sitting here, and I'm talking about marketing in a law conference. You see what I'm saying? Like, there are other things that we talk about, and there are other networking when we talk about networking. and and social media and how to how to just get to where you want to go. If that's law school, great. We're gonna we'll, we're here for you. If it's if you decide it's somewhere else, great. We have other people who joined who you know I don't practice law anymore. I don't. I do um, as I said I do program audit for the state of Nevada. I, I'm an auditor, but I've also worked in in compliance and I've worked in different fields. So. Where do you where do you want to go? And the the network of those of those people are available to you too. And again, there's pre law alum that are in fields now that you may want to get into later. So then I think you sell the network, you you sell professional development on anything. Again, you're sitting at a law conference learning about marketing. It it, it happens. We we talk in SWOT analysis. You can use SWOT analysis anywhere, and you probably should. In, all, in a lot of decisions that we make and, and things you want to move forward on. Is it law specific? No, nope. not in, nope, not at all. But it, it, it has other things. So I think you figure out like what are the benefits that we have. Anybody can use our member benefits if you're a member. Um, the discount on Brooks Brothers alone is awesome. I, I would just add to that that if they want to be a doctor, so I don't care. Um, and if they want to be a doctor, then there's, that's highly regulated. So they want to know attorneys who can help them navigate that, right? If they want to be, I, I've always been in different fields, highly regulated. So the more you network with people who do things like that, the better prepared you are to be the best at your goals in a different profession. So that's part of it. The other piece of it is we'll teach you how to market yourself because that's part of professionalism and branding. Um, and it doesn't, it, it, if they don't, if they don't get that, like if they don't see the benefits there besides the other benefits, let them keep walking. Like I don't mean to be like I'd be, we want our members to yeah. go, but but you you just have to understand what they're looking for, have your same ten things, and know where to fit it, and then keep going. Because maybe that year isn't your big year, but maybe the next year your improvement's gonna go through the roof. And it's okay. Right? To so say don't it. don't like. Yeah, we so may not be right for you, <laughs> and it's okay. But okay, one last question, and then um, Emily's like. We got, we got fun stuff to go to. <laughs> She's not really. Any other questions, concerns? I'll be around. I'll be at the reception. Probably find me at the Washington Monument later. Um, anyway, there's my email. There's my phone number. I'm on Facebook and pretty much everything else. Feel free but to contact. But not. Oh, I'm on Twitter. So. Um, I'll check that. Email. But oh, and not check Snapchat. I don't want to use that. Um, so. Again, anything you, if you have questions, concerns, if you if you want me to present at your chapter, I can always do it via Skype unless you're in Reno, and then I'll, I'll come over to UNR and right down the street. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.